Welcome back to Soar Financially. My name is Kai Hoffman. I'm the at JR Mining guy on Twitter and the CEO of the Soar Financial Group. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll be we're joined by John McConnell. He's the president and CEO of Victoria Gold, a gold producer. I love having gold producers on the program. <laughs> I say it every time we chat, John, because the difference are so vastly different than uh, what we can talk about. It's good to see you again, my friend. Good to see you. And I like being a gold producer. I, you know, being a junior is a tough business if you're not producing. So, uh, yeah, you know, raising money in the capital markets is not a lot of fun. Not right now, at least. No. So I'm curious because, let, let, okay, let's take the conversation actually in a completely different direction than I originally had planned, but let's stay on that, being a gold producer. Are you actually getting calls from junior mining or exploration companies right now to invest into their companies, become a yeah, shareholder? many. Many? Um, you know, we, uh, not only do we bring cash, but, you know, we have expertise. We're one of the few groups that have, you know, built a mine in Canada, a large mine, you know, on schedule and, uh, on budget. So, uh, and we're the only heap leach producer in, uh, you know, uh, Canada. So lots of people interested in having Victoria be a shareholder. But it's mostly the money though. Yeah, <laughs> and most definitely. And, you know, we look at a few things like that, but, uh, you know, most of the juniors have uh, projects that are 10 years from production minimum. Right. You know, they haven't even started the permitting process. So, so they look interesting, but, you know, we have interests in two juniors already, and we have a, you know, a great exploration project in Raven that uh, needs permitting as well. So, you know, our focus isn't on investing in other juniors. It's on if we could do find another, uh, you know, closer to being construction ready, like permitted, that would be the ideal no. acquisition for Victoria. There are not too many shovel ready projects out there. No. I had that conversation with somebody else the other, just the last 24 hours, I think. Yeah. Like, who are our M&A targets even right now, right? Um, we're, we were at a point in time where gold was close to an all-time high. We've sort of retraced our steps a little bit there. But uh, as a gold producer, how, how has that made your life easier or more complicated in, um, <laughs> being in that price environment right now. Are you seeing like vendors asking for more money because they they open the Kitco app every morning and say, hey, gold is at twenty one or $2,000. I'm going to charge you 10% more today. No, I don't think we've seen any of that. I mean, certainly we've seen big inflationary price increases, you know, mostly re related to fuel. And fuel drives all of our costs. You know, we're at the end of a long road to the north. And so everything has to be transported in. You know, we are hooked up to hydroelectric grid power. So, you know, our crushing plant and stacking system and the camp and that all is on grid power. But our mining still requires fuel. So uh, directly we use fuel. Fuel, you know, we used to bring our employees to site, bring food to site, lime, cyanide, all directly related to fuel prices. So, you know, we, uh, a year ago, fuel price, we started to see it creeping up, but it was still a year ago, it was uh, say a dollar 20 per liter landed at Eagle. Uh, it peaked uh, last year in June at about 220. So, you know, almost double. And currently it's at about a dollar fifty-five. Mm -hmm. You know, we budgeted a dollar sixty-five. So, you know, hopefully it stays where it is uh, for the balance of the year. Yeah. In interesting that you can bring up inflation. Like have you seen it with other costs as well? Like how, how much of your cost is, is fuel? It's probably about thirty percent. Oh, that's massive. Yeah. yeah, that's our second largest cost center. You know, first is uh, wages and salaries. Obviously, yeah, personnel. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Um, on, okay, on, you talked about gold price and how. Yeah, it's like but the positive effect as well, because I want to get to a bit of the sentiment, the conversations, how they might have changed. Because like, because you're a producer, you talk to different fund managers or institutions as well. Like, has that changed a little bit? Like the conversation or the the audience, maybe. Um, you know, I think. You know, this recent trip I did to Europe, 
for example, uh, you know, I met in Paris with uh, the Rothschilds Fund. Um, they'd heard of Victoria and they'd been following it, but they don't have many investments in gold equities. But they're paying attention to gold now that it's, you know, risen uh, dramatically and had a note from them that uh, they've taken a one and a half percent position in Victoria in the last two weeks. Oh, fantastic. So, no. you know, it just, that one meeting paid for itself. Absolutely. Okay, and that's... they're a great long-term holder yeah. as well. So that's exactly what you want to see. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting that the dynamic is changing a little bit and there is more interest coming in, it seems, but the market is dead. Like we don't need to discuss oh, markets. Okay. No. <laughs> so we, we are trading, but uh, there there is a lot of money on the sidelines as yeah. well. Like we see a lot of, like we actually seen record amount of bought deals already this year, brokered deals, bigger checks are being written. Sure. Right? So you sort of what you're mentioning as well, sort of confirms what we're seeing on solve on the financing side. Interesting. Um, let's talk about operations real quick, and then we can talk about like, value growth and the next steps for the company as well. Um, catch us up on Q1, because those are the last numbers you've published. And um, we'll talk about, uh, what do you call that? Like things that happened since published, right? <laughs> so, or since March 31st. Yeah, I mean, we had a much better Q1. You know, we made the decision uh, uh, last year that we would stack throughout the year. So previously, you know, our general stacking in Q1 was 900,000 tons for the quarter. Mm. This year we stacked 2.1 million tons for the quarter. So dramatic increase. That's reflected in gold production. And same head grade, by the way. Same head grade. Okay. Um, and that, you know, the mine generally is running much better. Um, you know, post COVID, we. Uh, seem to be coming out of the problems with the labor market and supply chain issues seem to be getting sorted out. So, you know, uh, quarter two is going well, and uh, I expect uh, we'll have a record year this year. You mentioned in Frankfurt as well. That's why I'm following up on it, labor. Being up in Yukon is not easy. And I think you mentioned in Frankfurt, you were partially running on 65% like personnel capacity as well, because there's a lot of turnover as well yeah. during COVID, of course, not easy. Where, where are you in that and how, how is that looking and like how is, how is expertise available? So, yeah, you're exactly right. Through COVID and the past year, 2022, we had 35% turnover. That's what it was. Yeah. Very difficult to run a mine when, you know, say we have 700 employees. So, you know, 200 new employees every year. Uh, not very productive, uh, you know, they put a lot of strain on the training departments and on supervision. But, uh, you know, year to date, we're down to about 20% turnover. And our goal is over the next uh, nine months to get it down to 10%. Now, we're doing a number of things. We've adjusted salaries, we've, in, you know, and benefits. We've improved the camp. We've improved the quality of food. Soft surf ice cream machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, upgraded the Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, those kinds of things make a big difference to people. And, uh, you know, put TVs in every room. Okay. We never thought TVs would be necessary because everybody carries an iPad with them these days. But, you know, that was uh, looked at is yeah. one of the things that was lacking and uh, so we put a tv and it's actually worked out quite well it's a little things eh? yeah you don't think it is um I, I hinted at availability of labor as well and i'm talking about a specific there's a mine that just shut down in the yukon and we didn't need to go into specifics why and all that but there's probably an access capacity of personnel now available as well are you benefiting from that at all like is that well, impact? It's, like it's there's got to be a silver lining in what's going on in it's interesting, in Q1 was the first time we've been fully staffed since we commissioned the mine in 2019. Wow, okay, three uh, years later, four yeah. years later. Um, and, you know, I said, I was up at the site last week, I spent the week there, and I said to the guys, you know, uh, Minto shutting down is an opportunity. And our general manager said, yeah, we're going to interview a few people, but we actually are fully staffed. You know, yeah. but uh, I do know we uh, 
hired a geotechnical engineer that was at Minto. <laughs> you know, he just yeah. we needed one, and uh, he called up and said, "I just got laid off. Can I drive up and have an interview?" Yeah. Instead of going so, to Whitehorse, you went up to Mayo. Hey? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Interesting. Okay, so because because labor, how is that changing now? Let's call it operational excellence, uh, excellence, but also performance, confidence. Uh, like, what did the labor shot for, for all? Like, what kind of kings have you been able now to iron out? Because I know there were issues with their belt before, but that's more of a material issue, like not a people issue, right? So what, what are the labor? Well, the issues were turnover, okay. um, you know, and uh, availability of people. So we've got very good at hiring people. <laughs> now we've got to get good at retaining people. Okay. And that is some of the improvements we've made in things like the camp and that. And then the other thing we put a lot of focus on is training. So we've increased our training budgets. Uh, we're bringing in vendor trainers. For example, our crushing system is made by a company called Metzo. Mm -hmm. Metzo came in with trainers during commissioning in 2019. But then once uh, COVID was around, we didn't see them again until 2022. So two years without uh, vendor assistance. Yeah. And so now they come in every quarter, two guys for two weeks, and they're helping us to fine tune the system. But more importantly, they're training our operators. And the operators like that, you know, they want to do a good <laughs> job, but they never had the tools to work with huh. in the past. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Like, there's a whole rat. I love the discussion <laughs> with my, with miners because it's a very different one. Like how, how that's all like sort of hang together. Um, we, we have to talk about financials as, as well. Um, how have they improved or how they've changed over the last first quarter? We, haven't, we can't talk second quarter yet, but uh, first quarter, uh, what did it look like? I know it's still coming out of the winter months. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, uh, we had a good quarter stacking, so we had a good quarter of gold production, and you know we budgeted uh, seventeen hundred dollar gold, and we probably averaged sales at nineteen fifty or something like that. And so, you know, we had a very good quarter. Um, we paid down a little bit of debt, but uh, you know the next couple of quarters are looking very good. Uh, and we've done a little bit of hedging. So okay. even though gold is backed off a little bit, uh, you know, we hedged at 2100 for 30 percent of our production. So at 2100. Yeah, that's fantastic. That was way above all time highs. Yeah, like way above meaning twenty five dollars probably. But uh, yeah, fantastic. OK, that, that's good to hear. So, so John, like you, you said, you paid off some debt as well. What, what is the working capital situation? Like how much financial flexibility do you have now? Well, we've like, got lots of flexibility. Uh, I mean, people will look at our, you know, financials and they'll say, oh, you've only got 30 million dollars in cash. Well, we've got a revolving credit line that's for up to 125 million. And we use that just like you use a bank account. So if we've got more than 30 million in cash, we pay down some of the revolving credit line. If we've got less than 30 million in cash, we take out. Um, you know, I think for the balance of the year, we'll be reducing it. And then, you know, we do always make a quarterly payment on the term facility. So that's about uh, 13 million Canadian every quarter. The reason I'm asking there is actually a thought behind that that question <laughs> as well. Like, how much flexibility do you have now moving forward as well? It seems like, and uh, I, I sense that in Frankfurt as well when you present it, you, you're really confident about the mine's performance right now and uh, how things are going, the stacking and what's coming out of it, uh, out of the solution, right? So next steps, right? They'll ask for financial flexibility, growth versus value. You're a big shareholder, obviously. Like. I asked you at Frankfurt on stage, do you rather want to pay yourself a big fat dividend or are you looking to grow the company? What's your what's your goal? Well, first thing is to pay down debt, right? I'm old fashioned. May I ask real quick what the cost of debt is? Cost of debt is uh, about seven and a half percent. So it's, you know, the old library has been replaced by Sofra. So it's Sofra, which is roughly three percent right now, plus the going rate is about four percent, so it's just over seven. Okay. Sorry to interrupt, but I was no, no, okay. no, no. That's uh, it's a good point. 
Um, you know, so it's not expensive debt. You know, I consider over 10% is expensive debt, but uh, I'm still old fashioned. And, you know, I grew up, I don't think my father ever had debt. You know, he didn't buy anything he couldn't uh, pay cash for. So that's in my <laughs> DNA, you could say. And so uh, number one is pay down debt. And then we'll have a nice uh, discussion at the board. Uh, do we pay down, do we pay dividend? Do we buy back shares? Do we uh, going on a buying spree? Um, but you know, your question was specifically, do you wanna grow the company? Absolutely. Um, there's not a lot of things for sale though. <laughs> and so, but you know, we, we have, uh, you know, been approached by five or six uh, mid-tier or seniors, and uh, we've been open to signing CAs and letting them into a data room. We've also signed a couple of CAs with other single asset producers, mm -hmm. you know, and thinking is perhaps one plus one gives you two and a half. <laughs> um, and then uh, we're looking at uh, developers. Yeah. As I said earlier, we're not really looking at explorers, but, you know, if somebody has a resource and a PEA and is two years into the permitting process, we're interested in having a look at their asset. Is there a certain size category you're looking for? Is there a minimum you need, like per ounce? Uh, ounces yeah, per I year? think, uh, you know, 100,000 ounces per year. But really, the more important number is the margins. Yeah. You know, if uh, you're producing 200,000 ounces a year and your all in sustaining cost is uh, 2,000, we're probably you're not, not really, interested. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Um, since I have you here, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. Newmont Newcrest merger, how closely are you watching what's going on? Because I hear there might be some assets coming out in Canada's north, like Muscle White and others. Like, I'm not sure how it fits, but how closely are you looking? <laughs> oh, you know, we're watching what's going on. But, you know, I heard the same thing when uh, Newmont took over Gold Court. You're still trying to buy coffee, aren't yeah. you? You're still waiting, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I think uh, just because they've grown doesn't mean they're going to sell off assets. I think uh, there's pretty smart people running Newmont and uh, they recognize good assets and they won't be selling them. And let's face it, they can afford to leave things on the shelf for a long time. Oh, absolutely. They don't need to do anything. The land payments, nothing for them, right? Nothing. Um, let, let's finish up with talking about Victoria in the next few quarters. Like, have you put out guidance for, for the rest of the year? Yeah, well, we guided for the whole year. At, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I've been talking too much today, <laughs> too. Um, so our gold production is 160 to 180. Um, you know, we're on track to meet that still. And cost guidance, all in sustaining costs, uh, 1350 to 1550. Our Q1 costs were 1420. And uh, I think we'll be, you know, if we meet the the gold production guidance, we'll be at the lower end of uh, cost guidance. Okay, interesting. Okay, perfect. John, always great having you on. Yeah. That's a lot, lots to talk great about. To so always having you on opens the door for so many different questions. Really appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you so much. It wasn't far for you, so I uh, appreciate that. And uh, uh, yeah, no, I think we've covered it all. So thanks so much for coming on, John. Thank you so much. Everybody thanks, else, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this conversation here on SOAR Financially. Make sure to follow us. Hit that like and subscribe button. I think it's right there in this corner. I always do that. Uh, never check if it's actually in that corner. But it says subscribe on it. Hit that. Leave a comment. Leave a like. What do you think the company should do? Should they pay you big fat dividends or do you want to see the company grow? Really curious about your opinion. Leave it in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back with lots more.